What's up, guys? Jeff and Jeremy here another day on 5-Minute Fatherhood. We have the verse of the week for you today that we think relates to fatherhood, and that is in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 27. It says, put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready, and then after that, build your house. Jeremy, I've heard you talk about this verse before, and I love what you have to say about it, but yeah, how would you expand on that verse and what it's kind of trying to say? Yeah, guys, I love this kind of ancient wisdom. It is so rich. Um, it's really saying something that that is very different than what most what we do in our culture. In our culture, we oftentimes think about uh, you know, and a lot of you guys are young young families that are starting out, and you go out and you think about your kind of dream house or your starter house, or you go out and get that mortgage. And and piece of ancient wisdom that Solomon is saying here, I think, may challenge the order in which we think about building our house. And when you think about building your house, I think about like establishing kind of your multi-generational hub. And that's really easy to get excited about, and because of loans, we can kind of go after that pretty early. But what I feel like Solomon is saying here is that it's important to think about your work and the income streams that are coming into your house first. And you can imagine, in this, really, the picture he's painting here is in, a, in an agrarian world, um, you know, you could go and, and just put all your attention into building this epic house for you and your family and your wife. And he's like, no, 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 don't do that. Go out to the field, work the field, um, get those income streams going. Make sure you're thinking about what is actually going to sustain your house long term. Think about your work first, and then after that, build your house. Um, and so I, I know that this this can you know be difficult to quickly and easily cross apply to life in in our economy and in the way we do work today. But but I, I constantly think about this when I hear about um, just guys not not going quickly and and with enough intentionality in 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 really establishing what is your field, um, where are you getting your income as a family, how are you expanding that, and and I've seen some people this this verse and this principle be the difference between some people um, renting uh, in the first you know five years of their marriage and maybe their first couple of young kids and even though they could afford technically to get a loan and get a house and put a lot of their attention into their house they decided to put a lot of their attention into their work then into their income streams not because they are idolizing work not because they're making an identity out of work but because they're trying to establish a, a firmer foundation for the income of their family so that when they begin to build their house, uh, it's on a much stronger footing. That's a different reason uh, for really considering the, the ancient wisdom Solomon's giving his son about the order uh, in which to think about how you establish a house. And we all want that end result. But in our culture, we're kind of an instant gratification culture because this would be really hard for some people. So um, I don't know how that applies to you guys. I'm not saying that uh, here's the obvious order for everyone. I'm just saying I think this is really powerful ancient wisdom from a father to a son that that I ponder a lot and have thought about how to apply to my own life. And there have been many times where our family has said, hey, we're going to turn everything into income streams. We've done some kind of crazy things um, in order to really put that first, put building and establishing our field first. Uh, and this really has, I think, blessed and helped our family uh, a lot in the future. And I know, Jeff, you guys have, have done similar things. How would you uh, respond to that? Yeah, I think, uh, I actually, I, I want to ask you a follow-up question and then we can end with that. How yeah. do you, because I think, I think here's the, the two poles on this, I would say is this one, but then also I think then not fearing or sometimes the, the struggle or the temptation of guys thinking, oh, I have to have all my ducks in a row before I can get married and have kids. Yeah. And I think that's the other side of the spectrum, which I think is just as wrong of, you know, I have that it has to be perfect and I have to, you know, make $100,000 a year before I can get married or I have to be able to do this. And it's like, there's also a level of true that's, you know, people getting married with $5 in the bank account and that growth of kind of getting married together and growing together is actually really powerful. So I think, but I think both of those answer, like both of the, it depends on what stage you're in. Cause I think there's an answer to both of those depending on which one you fall yeah. in. So which would you say this one particularly, like, I don't think this one's applicable to the people that, you know, are tempted to get all their ducks in a row before they even start having a kid and right. because they won't have kids till they're 50. It's, that's kind of like a chasing the dog's tail a little bit, you know? That's right. But what would you say this verse, who does this verse apply to? What's the kind of guy in mind that kind of actually needs this verse? What are they doing? Are they not just being, are you saying a little bit more tempta tempted towards laziness, a little bit more tempted towards just not kind of having that belief of like, I got to work hard now so that I can bless my family when I'm 50 or what, what's kind of, what do you think this one's really speaking to? Yeah. The guy? I think this is really talking literally about fields and literally about houses. I mean, th this was happening in Israel where they literally had fields and then they'd, ha they'd have a house often in a, in a village or in a walled 
uh, village. And so, and so you had to decide which one of those to put your energy towards first. I do not think this applies at all to getting married and having kids or having all your ducks in a row or all your income streams or your house. Uh, I, I'm, I think a lot of that's supposed to be done as a team. And so it's mm. great, man, as soon as God reveals to you who you know, that person is, and you've, or you've made that decision, like, I want to make a covenant with this woman. Um, man, I tell people, obviously, in wisdom and in community and all of that, that's kind of a bigger topic, but, but you don't have to have ducks in a row, in my opinion, at all, because that's, totally. that's, that's a project you're supposed to do together and, and, and with your children. Um, and I think that, that dealing with all the stress and, and complexity of, of, of dealing with fields and houses while you're having kids and why you, while you have a wife is actually really healthy. This is where I, Solomon also says, it's good for men to bear the yoke while they are young. And that's the yes. yoke, man, when you have all that stuff going on at once. But I think this is specifically talking about somebody, and I think this is a big temptation in our culture, who really tries to max out what they can actually take out as a mortgage on a house as an early start to yeah, that's the, the, their, their, that. their life. That, that's, that's what I think is a little bit sort of maybe backwards, and you need to question that. And that, that, there are a lot of people do that. They, they go out and they get their first you know, well-paying job or decent-paying job. They go to a bank, find out how much they can actually take out, and they go, they go maximum into debt uh, to get the best house they can possibly buy, and their income streams are really paycheck to paycheck. Um, and I'm just like, ooh, you could slow that process down and yeah. build a better income stability situation uh, for your family. That's kind of what I've taken away from, from this ancient wisdom. What's up, guys? Thanks for watching another daily episode of Five Minute Fatherhood. A couple quick announcements. Did you know we have a free Facebook group for dads out there who watch these videos where we talk about these videos and the content, we do lives, we do Q and A's, we encourage one another, link down in the description. We'd love if you request to join and be a part of the community. It's awesome, it's free, and we can't wait to meet you. Also, me and Jeremy like to say a lot of fathers out there have never been taught how to be one. So we created a masterclass called Skill of Fatherhood Masterclass where we teach exactly that. Different modules, unpacking all the different skills necessary to be a father who builds a multi-generational family team on mission. Link in the description for that, along with a secret discount code for the YouTube community watching. Secondly, boom, you hit this button right here. I Right there, did it work? I don't know if I timed it well. But you can hit the subscribe button so you can actually see these daily videos when they actually come out and get them straight to your inbox. It would mean a lot to us if you hit the subscribe button. Let us know if you do because we do random giveaways for those who are subscribers and they let us know. We love you guys and we'll see you tomorrow.